if there's such a disconnect in the West with what war is really like, how do you get people to understand what's happening in Ukraine? I asked Glenn what he would tell someone that wants to know. And before you hear the answer, know that Glenn is very direct. He doesn't soften what it's like to be a soldier. It's something that people need to hear. And Ukrainians need to know that the reality of the situation is also being talked about. Drive to Bakhmut. Just drive the road to Bakhmut. That's it. It's the only way. Or at least look at the videos of the drive to Bakhmut that people have been uh, put, put in. Because when you actually see that shit in front of you and the fire and the flames going up and the explosions, um, and then that, that's when people know it's real. When you've been shot at, then there is a beginning of an understanding that, that the world is slightly different. When you've been shelled, there is a real understanding that the world is different. And, and I think that, you know, some of the politicians have been to Ukraine and have not been far from the, the shelling. Uh, I've got an understanding. Some obviously have got an understanding because they've read a lot you know, from the reading of war books, like Boris Johnson. You know, I mean, to write, to write about Churchill, he had to re read about war. That brings a reality to, to it. But I think a lot of people have never read a war book. I've never been to a war zone. A lot of politicians never been to a war zone, never been shot at, never been shelled, and, and just can't, can't bring themselves to un understand actually what it's like. What that, you know, that horrible feeling of fear when, some, when you hear that boop of a mortar and you realise it's not one of yours because you haven't got one. It's someone else's and it's going to come down somewhere. You know, these things, are, you, they go through you cold. Absolutely, you go cold. And uh, you can't explain this to someone without them actually, in a way, seeing it or, or understanding it. Right. Films don't help because, you know, uh, because people fire off lots of ammunition and nobody really ever gets hurt. Or if they do get hurt, that's it, they're shot, they fall over and, and you don't see any more about it. In, in reality, you know, when you come around a corner and there's one of your soldiers, <laughs> yeah, I, as I have, and there's one of the soldiers had a bullet in the face, then it's shitty. Then it is really shitty. And it goes through you. It get, get, the coldness goes through your body. Don't, you can't ever forget that experience, that feeling. So Western soldiers, most of them should know. Some have been to Afghanistan and Iraq and have seen their friends blown up. They, they know. They, they understand. When you've seen... When the vehicle in front of you blows up, it will live with you for the rest of your life. You know, one of your friends is in that vehicle and it's blown up. You will have post-traumatic stress. You will remember that for the rest of your life. I don't care who you are. Um, it, we don't have a generation of politicians in the West that have experienced this. If war is so hard to explain, are people with really no idea making decisions? Yeah, and they don't understand. And they can't, they can't visualize it. They can't, they don't have the tools in their, in their, in their thinking armory to judge the, 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 the sheer nastiness and evil of what Russia is doing at the moment. Hence, they downgrade it mentally. I, maybe because they don't want to. Maybe because they don't want to actually to, to say, this, this, is, this is pure, this is evil, pure and simple, coming towards us in a big, nasty way. And, you know, okay, so they get frightened. But they can't afford to. Polit politicians cannot afford to downgrade this war. And as I said, I think they're downgrading it by a huge factor. They just do not understand what's going on. I can't help, I can't help them learn this, except talk about it and say, you know, you've got to go to Bakhmut. You've got to get close to Bakhmut and feel, feel the, the, the terror and feel the pain and actually, you know, one, one trip in an ambulance, armoured ambulance, with, by a politician in most parliaments into Bakhmut and back out again. And you listen to what, how he talks when he comes back out. Uh, you know, Kiev, Kiev's a walk in the park still, relatively. Because the odds of you being killed in Kiev by a missile are tiny. Even if it is, it is loud and nasty when it goes over your head. 